The following program contains explicit calls for clear thinking. If you suffer from emotionalism, Randall may not be right for you. Check with your romance novelist. Standing for truth in the four corners of America. Fighting for justice on the frontiers of the culture wars. And turning resistance into an art form. The only TV host arrested more times than Mahatma Gandhi, Randall Terry. Thank you. Welcome to the program. Softy? Only until I go like this and flex my intellectual muscles of steel. <laughs> It's going to be a great program, ladies and gentlemen. A lot to talk to you about in the news. I love you. I love you. And I love you. And I'm so glad that you've come to be with me in this journey into broadcast mediocrity. Oh, today's program, we're going to look at the GOP. They took another seat in Hawaii away from the Democrats. Don't fear Nancy Pelosi. He's one of you. And Iran is going forward with its nuclear program. Trust me. They're going to have a bomb unless we or Israel intervenes. And American Idol in the tank? How can this be? Can you spell Ellen DeGeneres? Oh, yes. Today's program is brought to you in part by Mediocre Christians, where our lukewarmness has helped pave the way for America's demise. And by the Supreme Court of the United States. We walk as gods among you. A lot to talk about. I've got a quick word from Joey the Hammer, a song coming up. It's going to make you cry. It's a love song to some of those crazy women in Congress. That and so much more. Don't go away. I have an appeal pending before the United States Supreme Court. My attorney informed me that today was the last day that you could go through the front door where it says equal justice under law. He was nervous. I started to get excited. I said, what? You mean to tell me we're going to go through this side door? Listen, take a stack of $100 bills, go in and say, I'm with Louie, friend of Joy the Hammer. What's it going to cost me to get him out? Go into the government. It's the ultimate in organized crime. Welcome to the program, friend. It is I, your servant, Randall, leading cyber refugees out of the cyber ghetto and into real battle. But first, the news. Before I go to the news, I've got to tell you right now, I got nothing for you. You might as well change the channel. This show is going to stink. It's going to rot. It's going to rot on the ash heap of broadcast history. I swear to you, go away now while you can. Okay, to the news. The GOP has won a seat in Hawaii, Abercrombie seat. This is like to the left of Stalin in this district. What happened? A three-way race, two Democrats. And with about 40% of the vo vote, he's the Republican soup du jour. What do we know about him? Not much. He's 38 years old. Went to the same high school as Barack Obama. He believes in Roe versus Wade. That means you can have your child on a landfill. He's all for that. And he supports homosexuals serving in the military. In other words, he's a left winger. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people that would, in the Republican Party, that would rather have him than Rand Paul. Yeah. And they're already making comparisons between him and Scott Brown. Now, he did say the only difference between him and Scott Brown was that he did not pose nude in Cosmopolitan. Oh, no nude photos? No nude photos in Cosmopolitan. So he's not quite the stud that Brown is up there in Massachusetts, but... Um, don't, don't rejoice. You Tea Party people, you Republicans, don't rejoice over this man being, uh, <clears throat> being in, in Congress. Let me tell you a little secret. Ready? An enemy outside the gate makes you vigilant because you can see him coming and you watch for him. An enemy inside the gate makes you dead because he can poison your food in the day and cut your throat in the night. These Republicans who oppose what the party stands for are a threat to liberty and to the family, and I grieve when they win. All right, 
Iran. They're going forward with their nuclear weapons program. Don't worry about this deal that they've cut with Brazil and with Turkey where they're going to ship some low enriched uranium in exchange for fuel rods for their medical facility. Listen to me, it's all a scam. It took so many months to put this deal together that they have enough uranium already to make a nuclear bomb. Now, this is that point in the broadcast where I turn over here and say something funny. There's nothing funny about this. I, I, for the life of me, I can't figure out a way to make a joke about a nuclear bomb going off in Tel Aviv or in Jerusalem, or about a nuclear bomb being put on an oil tanker and taken to the coast of New York City or Miami or Jacksonville, Florida. Our foreign policy is being run by lunatics who do not understand what Islam is all about. And if this ancient proud nation of Persia goes forward with this nuclear weapons program, we are going to have huge problems on our hands in the form of open war. Finally, speaking of open war, American Idol at war with the American family. Their numbers are in the tank. And why is that? That's right, that lady you're looking at right there, Ellen DeGeneres. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you right now, I like Ellen DeGeneres in, um, in, fi in Finding Nemo. Her, her voice work for Dory was absolutely hysterical, exquisite, and endearing, all right? The problem is this. When you say we're going to have a family show where moms and dads are getting together to watch TV, they don't want their child recruited into an alternate lifestyle. <laughs> no recruitment? No recruitment. They're going to let her go. They're going to let her go. And the show hopefully will come back. But, but he, he, here's the thing. She's been making comments on the air uh, about the lesbian lifestyle and how wonderful it is. And yes, I've loved a woman and this type of thing. The, the, there are people in Hollywood that are hell bent to numb us to this lifestyle. Now, let, let me say something, OK? Because people say, oh, Randall Terry is homophobic. Randall Terry is a tyrant. He's a domestic terrorist. If you put two light bulbs together, you don't get light. Hmm? You have to have a man and a woman for the procreation of the race. But beyond that, there's a God in heaven who created the institution of marriage. We don't get to redefine it. And if somebody wants to engage in a self-destructive lifestyle, they actually can do that. God gave us all free will. It's not an inherent right. It might be an inherent wrong. But people can engage in a self-destructive lifestyle if they want to. But if your son or your daughter came to you and said, I've chosen to be a drug addict. I know it's an alternate lifestyle, but it's what makes me happy. And it's what I've chosen to do with my life to find full expression and full meaning to the human person within me that I am. And all I ask you to do is to please accept me and maybe help me to go to a pharmaceutical school so that I can learn how to make my own drugs and not get hurt. How many of you parents would say, honey, I don't agree with you, but because I love you, I support your decision? No. You would say, I love you. Let's get you into a drug rehab program. Let's find a way for you to get off this needle or to get off the spoon. You would not endorse this lifestyle. And the homosexual behavior in that world is self-destructive. Now I say, oh, you're making a judgment on people. No, I'm not. Listen to me. All of us have temptations. There are sins that all of us find really interesting. And then there are some sins that we don't find interesting. So this is not saying that one person is necessarily better than another, but it is saying that you can't say, well, drug addiction is okay, it's gonna be fine. You can't say homosexual behavior is okay, it's gonna be fine. It's self-destructive and it's wrong. I'll be back in a minute. Don't worry. There'll be bluebirds over the white cliffs of Dover. That explains a lot about why they'll be white. Moments with Moses. If you walk in my statutes and observe my commandments and do them, 
I will make my abode among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. Welcome back, friend. A song about women in politics with an interpretive dance and a cameo appearance by me as the dancer. This one is for the ages. The song goes out to all the crazy women in politics. Nancy Pelosi, you're crazy as a loon. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you make me howl at the moon. Olympia Snow, won't you please just go and take your silver spoon? Another boxer rebellion just to push you back. Susan, be Anthony, I'm crying out to you. Martha Washington, oh, what we gonna do? These crazy Jezebels are taking. Oh, straight to hell Michelle Obama Your Margaret Sanger's dream come true Eleanor Keegan, girl Already seen too much of you Eleanor Norton Holmes What we gotta do just to keep you home Susan Susan B. Anthony I'm crying out to you Martha Washington What we gonna do These crazy Jezebels Are taking our nation I speak for a lot of Americans when I say we want good women in politics. Deborahs, Miriams, people who stand up for truth and righteousness in the public square. But these crazy left-wing, theophobic, God-hating women, they got to go. Thank you, thank you, you're very kind. Nancy Pelosi, it goes out to you. But don't worry, Nancy, you probably won't be the Speaker of the House much longer. Yes, Nancy, we're going to take that burden off your shoulders. You've proven yourself intellectually ill-equipped to deal with the power. And so we want to send you back into political exile. Good boy. You can properly pick it legally if you want, and you don't want to. Please stand up. Bolshevism is not a policy, it is a disease. Sir Winston Churchill. Welcome to the program, friend. It is I, your servant, Randall Terry leading the nation's largest support group for the victims of government education, helping us to learn to think again. Some of you, it'll be the first time in your life that you've actually thought through an issue. I want to help you think about reclaiming the culture. All kidding aside, 
I want to see Nancy Pelosi out of office. If not out of office, I don't want her to be the Speaker of the House anymore. That means we've got to have a changing of the guard. It means that we're going to have a peaceful political revolution. And ultimately, if we're going to get the country back, we're going to have to have full-blown social revolution. It doesn't have to be violent, but it has to upend the current order. Now, look back at social revolutions in America's past. Ladies, have you ever thought about why you can vote? All kidding aside, do you know what women went through so that you could vote? Did you know that there were dozens of women held in Washington, D.C. for nearly two months in an insane asylum because they were demanding the right to vote? Did you know that Susan B. Anthony's only vote, the only vote she ever cast, was illegal and she was arrested for it? Did you know that women used to say that men were tyrants like King George III? They actually took the Declaration of Independence and rewrote it to show that it was men who were oppressing women, like what, with no representation, these guys are tyrants. They used words that were incendiary. They showed images that were intense and provocative and incendiary. They made sacrifices. They took actions that were in people's face and offended people. There's a lot of people right now in this country that want America to be brought back to justice and moral sanity, but they're not willing to pay the price. They're not willing to use the weaponry of social revolution that has proven itself over centuries successful. They want to blog. Oh, look at me. I'm, I'm a great warrior for truth. Send. They want to talk in their safe ghetto with their friends where everyone agrees with them. They want to send $50 to the group of their choice who's going to win the battle for them. But what they don't want to do is surrender their reputation. They don't want people to say, you're an extremist. They don't want people to mock them, hurl insults at them, write unkind stories about them in newspapers or online. They love their life, they love their reputation, and therefore they are singularly ill-equipped to lead or even fight in a social revolution that will prevail. I want to win. I want to go on and do something else, I, 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 like write novels or something. I don't want to keep doing this, but for us to have victory, we have to learn the lessons of social revolutions in the past that were victorious, and then we have to emulate them. I'll be back in a minute. But thou, O oh God, will cast them down into the lowest pit. Men of blood and treachery shall not live out half their days. But I will trust in thee. Amen. Hi, friend. I'm Randall Terry. George Washington said, of all the dispositions which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. Once again, we see the words of an extremist. Somebody intolerant of things that are different than their religion or different than their understanding of morality. I don't think that Charles de Jou in Hawaii would subscribe to what George Washington said. Let me make two points. Number one, we cannot turn our back on God-given principles and expect political freedom, political prosperity, and even political survival. And the second thing is this, you and I as people, we have to be willing to say the words that are politically incorrect. We have to be willing to go on record in a public setting and say that there are some things that are right and some things that are wrong. This is going to bring a backlash. But there are so many promises, both in the scriptures and in the, your study of history, that show it's people who take a strong stand that actually change the tide of history. 
Show me the moderate hero. Show me the moderates in your textbooks that change the course of civilization by not offending anyone or by being moderate, middle of the road. They don't exist. Be a hero. Say the truth. God bless you.